up guys? I know the last time that I did a system info panel video on the channel, you guys really dug it. And this time we're showing you how to do it wirelessly. Looking to grab Windows at a crazy discount? Head over to scdkey.com at the links below and use promo code BPS25 at checkout to score a sweet deal on Windows 10, Windows 11, and Microsoft Office. Once you've completed your purchase, just click over to your user center, hit the green button to view your code, copy and paste it into your Windows activation settings, and away you go. Check out SCD Key at the links in the video description for Windows, Office, Games, and more. Okay, so if you guys aren't familiar with the first video that I did on PC system info sensor panels, you could check that out right up here. Now today we're not going to be going into how to create the sensor panel itself in IDA64. For that, the same method applies that we went through in the first video. However, we are going to be using different hardware this time. And that is actually the pretty cool part of what we're doing here today. We're gonna to be showing you guys how to set this up on your phone, on your tablet or on both. The first thing that you guys are gonna need if you wanna try this yourselves is an Android device. Now, today we're gonna to be using a couple of products from Doogie. That's the S99 phone that they've sent me here. This is like a ruggedized model phone. It's actually pretty neat. Uh, and the second thing is a tablet. This is their T20 tablet. It's their newest release. Now, uh, Doogie was nice enough to send over to me a couple of products for use in this video, even though clearly I'm not a phone reviewer. So big thanks to them for that. Uh, but you could use any Android device really that you have at home. What I would probably recommend is not using your primary device for this. If you have an older phone or an older tablet, that might be better because otherwise your phone is gonna be tied up next to your computer all the time and that's not really all that helpful unless you were just gonna use this in short bursts, I guess, and maybe that would work. But ideally, you probably wanna have like a spare device or something like that, that would probably work best. And if you don't have a spare device, you can always just go on Craigslist and buy somebody's older Samsung Galaxy phone for whatever, 50 bucks probably, and that would work just fine. The next thing you're gonna need is a way to have your PC speak to your Android device, and that is gonna be a piece of software called Space Desk. Now, Space Desk allows for wired or wireless connections to basically any Android device that could run the app. So the first thing you need to do is go to the Space Desk website that we have up here on the screen, go to the download button, and you're gonna to need to download the driver software for your Windows PC. So if you're running Windows 8, it's right here. If you're running Windows 10 or 11, it's right here. I already have it downloaded and installed on my PC, but it works just the same as any other executable file. You download it, you double click it, it extracts itself, and all of a sudden you're installed. Once you install Space Desk onto your PC, this is what you're gonna see. This is their driver console. It's pretty basic in its application and honestly its appearance, but it is highly functional and I found it to be very easy to use. Essentially what it does is it's gonna display your IP address and allow for connections from any mobile device that might be running the client software. In this case, you could see that I actually already have a connected device because I was running through this myself to make sure that I had all the kinks worked out. But I'm gonna show you how to connect your tablet or your phone to this software once it is up and running on the PC. So check this out. It's honestly super easy to do. You're just gonna go to the Play Store and search for Space Desk. It should be the first result that pops up in the search. And then once it does, you click download to install the software onto your Android device, phone or tablet. And then once you open it up, the software will automatically search for any devices that are on the same network that it is. So in, in other words, if you have both of your devices up and running on the same Wi-Fi network, they will automatically connect. Once the driver console connects your two devices, you can then minimize it and kind of get it out of the way. But you could see that I'm on my main desktop right here. And if I move the cursor to the right, you could see that it slides over to this little window that we have situated down at the bottom right corner of the screen. This is actually my phone. So I'm capturing through OBS both my main display and the phone display because they are an extension of each other. So they just function like you would have a secondary monitor plugged in, only everything is wireless. And I could show you guys that because I have my phone in my hand right here and I could take my cursor that's on the screen here and slide it over and then it's on the phone. 
Now, what do you wanna do with this secondary display? That's entirely up to you. If it's just the size of a phone, it might be pretty difficult to get anything on here that's really very useful. Things like Twitch chat or a secondary screen for video editing or something like that really wouldn't work with a display that's quite that small. But I think the actual coolest thing that you could do with a phone size display is to use it as a system info panel. And that's what we're gonna be doing here today. Now again, I already showed you guys how to make an Ida64 sensor panel uh, and configure it the way you want. So we're not gonna run through that again. Today, instead, we're gonna use something that's pretty simple and that is the AMD Adrenaline software. So I have an all AMD system that I'm using currently as my daily driver. It's got an AMD CPU, an AMD GPU, and correspondingly, I can use the Radeon software to monitor basically everything about my PC. And luckily, that means that I can take this, drag it over to the phone and snap it in place. And now I have a system sensor panel that is wireless and shows me everything about my PC that I might want to know. Here it is zoomed in. Now we're capturing directly from my phone. And here is your cursor flying around on the phone screen, which is pretty wild. But you can see that we can see anything about our GPU that we want. Also, it shows the load the utilization on our 7950X processor. You also don't necessarily need to use your mouse if you wanna do things on the phone display because it's a touch screen and it still works as a touch screen. So if I wanna just take my finger and change things about what is displayed, I can go ahead and do that very easily without using my mouse. Now that's cool and all, but you might be wondering, what am I gonna do with this once it dies? It's only gonna last an hour, two hours, three hours with the screen on and at full brightness. Well, luckily the SpaceX software also has functionality for wired implementations of the same technology. So again, you don't need to install anything else. All you need to do is take your USB and plug it in and then click this little toggle in the Android USB cable driver menu to on. Once the USB connection is established, it works the exact same way as it did when it was wireless. It acts just as a secondary monitor. You could take your system info, drag it over, snap it in place, good to go. Now, obviously just keep in mind that every Android device has a slightly different resolution and you might want to use it either in portrait or in landscape mode. And the way you can adjust that is very easy. You just right click on your desktop and go to display settings. You have your primary display here in labeled number one and your secondary display, which is your phone or tablet labeled as number two. If you click on two, you could scroll down and then you can adjust the parameters. You could adjust the display scaling, you could adjust the resolution, you could adjust the orientation. Other small tweaks that you guys might wanna make is to make sure that the brightness on your device is cranked all the way up to maximum in order to make it the most visible in a normally fairly bright environment. And the second thing is to turn off the extending of your taskbar. And that again is fairly easy to do. Come down to the taskbar, right click and go on taskbar settings scroll down to taskbar behaviors, and then unclick show my taskbar on all displays. This will prevent the taskbar from extending over to the secondary display. But what if you're super extra like me and you wanna have not only your phone displaying your system info, but you wanna have a tablet to use for Adobe Premiere assets or maybe for comments during Twitch streaming or whatever else you might want a secondary display for. Well, we have ways to connect more than one through the Space Desk software as long as this little toggle here is checked. So you have a wireless connection to your phone right now and you wanna add a wired connection to your tablet. And again, that is pretty easy to do. You just go into the Space Desk software on your tablet, click connect as you did on your phone and all of a sudden this background is no longer actually my desktop. It's actually my tablet. So now we have three displays connected. We have our main display here, we have our tablet here, and then we have our phone over here. And the way we can verify this is by right-clicking and go to display settings. And now we see we have three separate displays connected to the same device through Space Desk. Now make sure these are arranged in the way you want them to be arranged. And why this matters is because when you're dragging your mouse left to right, it's actually going to go from your main display to now display number three, which is our tablet, and then to the phone. If you want it to go the other way, it's very easy to do. Just grab the phone, drag it over, 
and then it becomes the secondary display. If we click here on our tablet and then we scroll down, we have the same options that we did with the phone. You can make the scaling different or the resolution different or the orientation different, depending on how you have it situated on your desk. I'd recommend either getting a display case that either stands up like a folding case for your tablet or maybe a phone stand. You can pick those up pretty cheaply on Amazon or you could 3D print one yourself. I'll leave an STL file down below if you guys are interested in that. So now we have three displays connected to our PC. One is a phone, one is a tablet, and of course one is our main monitor. What are we gonna use all that space for? Well, I was actually thinking about some cool applications that you could do with a wireless device that is used as a display. Say you have a project that is gonna take a long time to complete, a long video export or, or some kind of compile. You could slide that application over to this display and then go about your business. Go somewhere in your house, do your dishes, do whatever you have to do, and you can have a remote monitoring station for what's happening on your main PC. As far as the tablet goes, the same thing obviously applies, but because this is a bigger screen, I think this would be better utilized for something like Adobe Premiere Assets or for comments during Twitch streaming or anything else of that nature. So that's it for this quick little tutorial on how to get a both wired and or wireless connection so that you can have a secondary and tertiary display running from your PC whenever you might need it. Let me know down below in the comments if this is something you guys are interested in or if it's something you use or if something you will use and what you might use that other room on your display for. Thanks so much for watching. As always, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Get subscribed if you're not already, and I will see you next time.